Hello everyone and welcome to Homework. I'm Tori Johnson in New York. There are more than 15 million people in this country who are making money through direct sales. They're selling everything from cosmetics and clothing to gourmet food, gardening supplies and toys. Some people get into direct sales with a specific goal in mind. Maybe it's saving for the holidays or planning for a vacation. Others do it to generate a few hundred dollars a month to contribute to the household budget. No matter what your motives, we'll tell you everything you need to know to decide if direct sales is right for you and how to get started today. Recently on Good Morning America, we profiled a stay-at-home mom who went from making $200 a month to $2,000 a month. Here's Robin Roberts with her direct sales story. Hey, Jill, it's Janae. Hey, Janae. And I'm calling you about your show on Saturday. Janae Wildman has always loved meeting new people. Today, she's a branch manager with Longerberger American Crafts, a company that direct sells products in home shows, fairs, and community events. So as I pass this around, just so you know, this is a dress, what we call a dressed basket. Janae first dabbled in direct sales from home to pay for her daughter Caitlin's dance lessons, but soon discovered she could control her own income and gain flexibility. I would go out one night a week or so and come home with $100 in my pocket or maybe even $200 in my pocket, and I thought to myself, hmm, could I turn this into something more? And she did turn it into more. From working just a few hours a week and earning 200 a month to now devoting 20 hours each week and bringing home 10 times that, $2,000 a month. The beauty of direct selling, I think, is that you are in charge of your income. You can give yourself a raise at any time you want. With this added income, she quit her job as a paralegal and now shapes her schedule around her family. The benefits are that I decide. I'm able to arrange that schedule around my family and around their activities. And it's just a way, as a woman, for me to be able to have my cake and eat it too. Most of my friends are usually saying, you're so lucky your mom's home when you come home. But the world of direct sales is not an easy ride. The requirements, plenty of passion for the product you're selling. Here's our olive steam, also in the New York basket. And the diligence to get up and go to work every day, even if it's in your own home. I can call people and nobody knows that I'm sitting there with a cup of coffee in my pajamas. Sometimes that's a challenge because you'd rather be doing other things. You know, maybe I'd rather be shopping, but I have to be committed to building my business or it won't be a business. My first guest is Amy Robinson of the Direct Selling Association, rep which represents more than 200 companies within this industry. She joins us from Washington, D.C. Welcome, Amy. Hi, Tori. How are you? Good. So tell me, first off, how do I know if direct sales is right for me? What are the personality traits and the skills that you're looking for to know that this would be a good fit? Well, one of the great things about direct selling is that it is potentially a great fit for just about anybody. Um, there are the breadth of products and services that are available through direct selling means that just about anybody can find something that's going to be a fit for them. And you know, as we heard in the opening piece there, you know, finding passion for a product is really important. And frankly, a lot of people who are customers of the product start selling the product because they love those products so much and they want to get even more involved and they love to have that extra money in their pocket every month. So there are so many choices of companies that you could possibly get involved with. So what's the exact process of knowing what's right for you? How do you pick that product that you want to sell? Is it because you're potentially a customer first? So many people get involved because they're a customer first. That's absolutely true. But there are also many people who think, gee, I really need a flexible opportunity. I'm looking for a little bit of something to do in my extra time. Or maybe I just need a little bit of extra spending money. So I would recommend that you, you know, check out a couple different opportunities, attend several different home parties that might be going on in your area. Um, you know, find out what kind of products and services are available and see what might be a great fit for you. Because one of the greatest things about direct selling is the person who is selling those products knows a lot about the product, so they're really able to help the customers find a product that's going to be that's going to work for them so that it it helps ultimately um, to, to make your customers happy and, and really to help you achieve your goals as well sure and I know generally there is a cost associated with getting started with most companies so how much should I be prepared to spend and what should those cover costs cover 
You know, the costs for getting started in direct selling can go anywhere from zero dollars up to several hundred dollars. And really, the key that I always tell everyone is to make sure that you're getting something in return that's reasonable for what you're, se what you're spending. Uh, usually, you're going to get a, a sales kit um, for whatever the startup fee is. It might include some product samples, catalogs, order forms, and basically everything you need to get started in that business. And um, you know, that varies from company to company, and you really have to evaluate what you're getting in return for that startup cost. Some of the companies also are going to provide some type of training. Could I expect training to go along with it? Absolutely. There are certainly one of the goals um, of someone who might recruit another person into the business is to be a mentor for that person, um, to help them get started in, th in the business, to answer their questions, kind of you know, give them that little jump start, uh, you know, give them some tips and tricks as to you know, how to um, you know, get started and be successful. So certainly um, you, know, you would want to count on the person who's recruited you into, into the business to, uh, to help you out. And, and as well, you can rely on the company as well. Certainly you, if you're uh, considering an opportunity, you know, feel free free to call the company directly and ask them any questions. They should be happy to answer any questions that you might have. And I know for some people we get excited about the opportunity and then discover mm, it's, maybe it's not right for me. So tell me a little bit about um, company policies that we should be looking at specifically with a buyback promise. How does that work? Great. Well, you know, one of the things about direct selling that's so interesting for a lot of people is it's easy to get involved, and it's also easy to, to stop being involved in direct selling as well. And that works not only for people who are interested, perhaps they just have a short-term goal that they're trying to accomplish. It works well for them, but it also works well for people who aren't sure this is really the right opportunity for them, but they can sure try it out, and they're not going to risk any financial loss by trying out the opportunity. And in more cases than not, they're going to get involved and find out that they love it. But if for some reason they decide they don't want to continue in direct selling, it's really important to know in advance what your company's buyback policy is. And um, under the Direct Selling Association's Code of Ethics, one of the elements of that is a buyback policy, um, which uh, involves the buyback of, of uh, inventory and sales aids that you may have purchased. And um, so that's, it's really important to make sure that you're not going to risk financial loss by being involved um, in a direct selling opportunity. And finally, the last thing I want to ask is, if I'm still not sure about an opportunity, you say that I should be able to call a company directly, be able to ask all of the questions that I might have on my mind, mm -hmm. attend a party, and I should be able to get those answers before I have to commit. Absolutely. You know, you, you, I would definitely recommend putting together a list of questions you have. You know, certainly ask the person who's recruiting you, call the company um, if you have any specific questions. And, you know, make sure you can get answers to those questions. Uh, you know, opportunities aren't going to disappear overnight, so don't feel pressured to do anything um, in a timetable that doesn't work for you. Take your time in deciding. Uh, make sure you read all the liter literature. Make sure you understand how the compensation plan works and what you're going to be expected to do as a seller. And, uh, you know, just make sure that you've, you've answered all of those questions you have before signing on the dotted line because you want to make sure that the opportunity is going to be one that's right for you. Absolutely. Do your homework first. Amy Robinson of the Direct Selling Association, I appreciate your time and your advice. And for more information, you can go to dsa.org for a list of the companies and the complete DSA Code of Ethics as well.